Okay, so let's look at example five uh, from section 3.2 dealing with uh, nth roots. Um, so we want to um, figure out how to solve nth root questions and simplify radicals uh, of higher order index um, if they have variables uh, inside the radical as well. So we've done uh, the simple kind like these where there are no variables involved, but we want to see what it looks like to simplify radicals of nth degree with um, variables inside. So in any case, uh, I'll going to start this really slowly. There's many, many ways you can approach this. I'll just jump right in here and, and show you an easy way that I think you can think about something like letter A. Um, so uh, the easiest way to do this is just to say, you know, does 64 have a cube root? Um, and the answer fortunately here is yes, it's just four. And then also um, does y to the sixth have a cube root? Now that's a bit of a new question for you, but it's not that bad. Um, basically what we're saying is uh, can six divide by three? That's really the way you solve this, okay? Can six divide by three? And if it divides evenly, then the y just comes out of the radical. If it doesn't, then you know, if it divides partially, I'll show you what that looks like in uh, letter E. But uh, for now, if it divides evenly, 6 divides by 3 twice. And so the y just comes out completely out of the radical and you get y squared because 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, um, that's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it would be maybe to do something like this and say, I'm going to break this apart into cube root of 64 times cube root of y to the sixth. Again, 64's cube root is just four. And then maybe you can think about this in a slightly different way and say, I can think of this like y squared cubed, because this is a power of a power. So. Uh, I can say y to the sixth is y squared cubed, but then it's maybe easier to see that uh, the cube root and the cubic power cancel each other, so all that's left is y squared, okay? So that's another way to think about it. Um, I like the first way to just divide the exponent by the index of the radical, maybe a bit faster, but this is the same thing, it's equivalent, just changing the way it looks so it makes more sense to you, okay? Um, then if you have something like letter B, you can uh, just go ahead and use the power of a product rule here uh, and just multiply the exponents. That's okay. Uh, you can get 27 to the third and then P to the first and then Q to the fourth. And then you'd have to simplify uh, 27 to the third means cube root of 27, okay? And that just gives you uh, 3p cubed to the fourth, something like that. That's one way of doing it. I want to show you the other way as well because it's a little bit more um, informative and it's more similar to that, letter A. And so if you do just convert this to a cube root expression, put it in radical form, p cubed, q to the 12th, like this. Then, again, can you take the cube root of 27? The answer is yes, that's three. And then does three divide by three? Yes, it does, it divides once. So p comes out to the first power because three divided by three is one. And then uh, what about q? q can come out because 12 divided by three is four, okay? And so those are equivalent, just different ways of looking at it. Um, and, and yeah, I hope that helps you, okay? Uh, letter C, similar idea. Letter C, you're just simplifying in any way you can. And so uh, maybe this looks a bit tricky. So 14 divided by two is seven. Two goes into both of them. Uh, so on top I have seven. And then I'm saying x to the first power over x to the three-fourths power. So this is one minus three-fourths, okay? 
So 1 minus 3 fourths is 4 fourths minus 3 fourths. So uh, the answer will go on top because 1 is bigger than 3 fourths, and you'll just get 1 fourth on top. And then y to the third, there's no other y, so it just stays there. And then z to the negative 6, uh, that should become positive. We don't want negative exponents, so you just move it above the line. So z to the positive 6, or take the reciprocal. And this is over 1, so technically the answer is just this. If you want to write this as a radical, that's going to be very ugly so I think you can leave the answer just like this all right that is simplified nothing else you can really do to simplify that all right and then letter D letter D is a similar thing you say uh, basically fourth root of m to the fourth over fourth root of n to the eighth and then Again, does 4 divide by 4? Yes, once, so I get out m to the first power. And does 8 divide by 4? It divides twice evenly, nice and easy, and so you get n squared. Okay? Uh, again, you can finagle this. You can write this as the fourth root of uh, n squared to the fourth, and then the fourth root and the 4 cancel out, and you still get n squared. Okay, you can look at it a different way, too, if you want. Um, so that's also fine. Uh, and then um, this is an example, uh, letter E is an example of when things don't divide evenly and you get it gets a little bit tricky. So what you have here is, uh, and in these questions, when you know that 8 doesn't divide by 5 evenly and 14 doesn't divide by 5 evenly, uh, and let's say, for instance, 4 doesn't have a fifth root, I would leave a little bit of space and then just write the radical over here so that the things that come out can go in the front here, okay? And then the uh, uh, terms that, or variables or numbers that stay inside the radical, you just leave inside, all right? So uh, four doesn't have a fifth root, so we know it just stays inside. But now you're doing that little trick, eight divide by five, and you say, well, eight does divide by five once, but it doesn't divide evenly, there's a remainder of three, okay? So eight divided by five is one and three fifths. So there's my remainder of three fifths, okay? And so you just say, all right, since uh, eight can divide by five once, that is the power on the A, but then the remainder of three means that there's an a to the third power that can't come out of the fifth root. So again, you do eight divided by five once, and the remainder is three, and that stays inside uh, the radical symbol, okay? And you, same thing here, you do um, 14 divided by five twice, so b to the second, but there's a remainder when I do that, 14 divided by five is 10, divides by five twice, and then there's a remainder of four, so you say b to the fourth power. Stays inside, cannot come out of the radical. And then finally, five divides by five evenly, so you just get c to the first power. All right? So that's fine. So that's how you do this. I mean, obviously, we don't write powers of one and things like that, so this would be the final answer for letter e. All right? Still just use that idea of division. Um, you know, and uh, you can simplify it that way. So uh, that's letter E. L let's look at letter F. Letter F is a rationalizing question, just like the other ones we've done, but except now there's a variable instead of just numbers. So you can, again, use your quotient property and break this apart into two radicals like this. But now I have to rationalize. I can't leave it like this, okay? And so to rationalize, we said um, we said that I need to figure out how I can multiply y by something that will give it a power that is evenly divisible by the index of the radical. Okay. So in other words, uh, what can I add to eight to make it a number that's divisible by nine uh, by three by three? And so you say, well, 8 plus 1 would be 9, and 9 is divided by 3 evenly as 3, right? So 
uh, if I made this 1, now we know that this is the case, the cube root of y to the 8th times the cube root of y to the 1st is the cube root of y to the 9th, right? So this little bottom part turns into that. But the cube root of y to the 9th, I just say y divide by th uh, 9 divided by 3, and so I get y to the 3, divides evenly. So that it works, that would work, right? So this is kind of the thinking that goes into how I'm gonna solve this. So the first power will work for me, so then I have to do the same thing top and bottom, all right? And so then you get cube root of x, y on top, if I combine these two, just multiply the insides, and on the bottom I get cube root of y to the ninth, like we said over here, and then Finally, you just get cube root of x, y over 9 divides by 3, 3 times evenly, so you get that, right? And that would be the answer. You've rationalized it. It's simplified. Nothing else can happen. All right. So let me see uh, what else I can do for you here. So I think I'll do all of these with you. Um, so this is... A question again of adding like radicals. So root w and root w are like radicals. They're the same thing, the same index, the same variable, the same power, everything. So because they're these two terms or these two parts of the term, the radical parts are exactly the same, I can just go ahead and add them like combining like terms. Okay. So this basically turns into something like 2x plus 3x equals 5x. Because the x's are the same, I can just combine them. Well, that's the same thing here. Because these two are the same, exactly the same, has to be the same power on w, same index on the root, everything, then I can just combine them. So it basically just turns into uh, a fifth w plus three fifths w. But we know that a fifth plus three fifths is this four fifths uh, square root of w. Okay? Because they're like radicals. So if I have a fifth of it, plus three fifths of it, then I have four fifths of it, and in this case, it is square root of W, all right? Uh, and then uh, H, letter H, similar thing. Uh, I have a variable term here. The variable terms must be exactly the same for me to be able to combine them, okay? And so I have X to the first power, those are the same, and Y to the one fourth power, those are the same. And so because everything is the same, the variables are the same and their powers are the same, then these two are uh, like terms and I can just combine them. Now, you can also write it like this, 3x to the fourth root of y minus 8x to the, I mean, 8x times the fourth root of y. And again, same thing, this and this are exactly the same, the two radical and variable terms are exactly the same. So I can just say I have three of these things right here minus eight of these things. So three minus eight is just negative five um, times x times the cube, uh, sorry, the fourth root of y, the fourth root of y, all right? So they're just like radicals, like terms at this point. So you can just combine them. All right, and then, um, let me erase that. Last two. Let's work on the last two. So this is a little bit more tricky. Let's see what happens here. So I have, um, they're not like radicals because the power on Z here and the power on Z here is not the same and the number is not the same. And then I have a Z here and I have no Z here. So that none of this really looks like it's going anywhere. So all I have to do is try and simplify as much as I can and see what, what happens, all right? So you just try and simplify, so I do 12, and then I say uh, two doesn't have a cube root, so that's gonna stay inside, all right? But then z to the fifth, well, five divides by three once, uh, so it can come out as z to the first power, but then there's a remainder after division of two. So the z, the two is the remainder that stays inside the radical, okay? So the, the z to the fifth, the cube root of z to the fifth says five times, uh, five divided by three gives me one here, and there's a remainder of two, 
and that stays inside the radical, doesn't come out. Okay, and then same thing here, what do I get? I have a Z in the front already. Uh, and now cube root of 54, what can I do with cube root of 54? So I'll do it on the side here or uh, above this. Cube root of 54 is the same thing as cube root of 27 times two. And then I know that cube root of 27 is three, so that can come out of the cube root. So three comes out, but two doesn't have a cube root, okay? So um, two doesn't have a cube root, so two will stay inside. Okay, so that's the numeric part, the number part. And then z squared, two doesn't divide by three at all. It's just the remainder of two is what you get. So it doesn't divide, so I just leave it inside. Okay, so that's what you have there. And now, if you look at it carefully, you'll see, wait, we do now have like variable parts, all right? Uh, this is z to the first, this is z to the first. It's a cube root on both of the radicals. The indexes are the same. And it's a 2z squared, 2z squared. So the variable parts are exactly the same. So because these variable parts are exactly the same, I can treat them like an x almost and just say I have 12 of them minus 3 of them. So 12 of them minus 3 of them, that would be 9 of them. And that means 9 times z to the first cube root of 2z squared, okay? So that's what happened there. That's a little bit tricky. That's a little bit tricky, okay? And then the last one here, let's see if we can do anything here. Again, uh, these are not the same, so it doesn't look like anything's happening there. I can't just combine them right away. And so I think what we'll do is try and simplify first. So if you simplify that first, um, let me clear this out of here. If I simplify this first, what I get is, um, so square root of nine, well, we know that, we've known that for a long time, square root of nine is three, and then uh, square root of five. So remember this index is two, okay? We don't write it, we call it understood, but it's two. So it's five divided by two. Well, that happens twice, so W squared can come out. And then there's a remainder, five divided by two divides two twice evenly with a remainder of one. So this will not come out, w to the first power, that will not come out of the radical, okay, of the square root. And then minus here, again, three can divide by two, remember this index is two. Three divides by two once, so now I have this, w times w to the first, and then I have square root of w to the first because three divides by two once, and then there's a remainder of one. So the remainder is this w to the first that stays in here, okay? And that looks a bit confusing, but it's really not that bad. Three w squared root w minus ww, that's w squared um, root w. And so, again, you need to make sure that the variable parts are exactly the same. W squared times root W, W squared times root W, they're exactly the same. So I just say three of these minus one of them. The coefficient here is a one, right? So it's three of them minus one of them. It's two W squared root W. And that's it. That's the answer, all right? I hope this helps you guys and that you can uh, complete your homework well.